Who are you? Sure, so my name is Jake Goodman. I'm a psychiatry resident doctor and a mental health activist. I make videos on social media educating people about mental health and motivating people to seek life-saving treatment. How did your mental health journey begin? My journey with mental health began, I suppose, when I was in college. I had kind of always experienced a little bit of anxiety, but nothing that would bring me to the doctors or anything like that until college. That's when things started to come out a little bit. And before I experienced depression, I experienced anxiety. When I was in college, I went to the University of Georgia for college. I was pre-med, you know, working really hard in college and I was experiencing a period of time in my life where I just didn't feel like myself. I felt like off. I felt like I couldn't sleep correctly. My heart was racing. I was sweaty all the time. I was just sort of, I just thought it was all stress. And I, I didn't know why I was responding the way I was, why my body was responding the way it was. And I decided to go to the health center. I, I always remember the first time I went to the health center, I explained to the doctor all my symptoms and they, they ran all the blood tests on me, checked my thyroid, right? Like all the different types of diseases that I thought I could have. You know, maybe I have hyperthyroidism or, you know, I'm, I'm probably on WebMD a little too much. So who knows what kind of diseases I thought I had. They ran all the tests and everything came back normal. And I remember the doctor sitting me down and being like, what you're experiencing is anxiety. We believe that it's anxiety. And I remember thinking, no way, you got the wrong guy. Like that, that's not me. I, I'm not somebody who struggles with anxiety. That's, that's not me. And I really basically walked out of the doctor's office and thought like, Psh, that doctor has no idea what he's talking about. Well, that doctor absolutely knew what he was talking about because, you know, it took me some time to really accept this. But yeah, I struggled with anxiety then and I struggled with it throughout my life moving forward. When I got to medical school, anxiety poked its ugly head out again. Um, this time it was even worse. You know, basically studying full time in medical school, 70 hours a week, if not more. Uh, the major stressors that occur in medical school, it just felt like so much pressure and that periods of time again where I was really struggling with sleep, I, I just had low appetite, I wasn't really myself. And I always knew, I mean, at, at that point, I knew that I was struggling with anxiety and little elements of depression, but I still never really sought help. It wasn't until years later in residency training in my uh, first year of residency training, my first year as a doctor, where I sought help for the first time. I was experiencing really uh, a, a tough, now it, it's so clear in hindsight, like I was depressed, right? Like I had uh, issues sleeping. I had something called anhedonia, which is like when you have no pleasure, you can't experience any pleasure in things that you normally enjoy doing. Going out to dinner, you get no happiness playing soccer, which is something I enjoy doing. I was not experiencing any happiness. It's just like you're flat all the time. And I was experiencing that on top of, you know, just kind of low appetite and feeling kind of sluggish and just not myself again. And this time it actually took a conversation with a friend over uh, lunch, uh, a friend in residency who said, hey, um, I think I was telling her, you know, I'm burned out. I think I'm burned out. And we talked a little bit more and she was like, I think you're depressed. And it was like, you know, fireworks going off in my head. And I was like, shoo, I think you're right. Yeah, you are right. You know, I have the symptoms. You know, I'm some, I'm a doctor who treats mental health. And I didn't even realize that I was experiencing a mental health condition. And that just goes to show you that sometimes you need a little bit of a push from somebody else in your life to say, you know, it might be time to, to seek help. I ended up seeking help. I ended up going to a therapist ultimately going to a psychiatrist and changed my life. Seeking help for depression changed my life. It, it really did. After that experience, after I went through therapy, I started to feel better and went to a psychiatrist and started to feel better, you know, over the weeks and months, I ended up actually posting about it on social media. I posted a, a, a photo of me with a pill on my mouth and with the caption, uh, my name is Dr. Jake. I'm a 
physician who treats mental illness and I take medication for my mental health. And by the way, I'm proud of it. After I hit post, that, that photo really changed my life and took me on the trajectory that I'm, that I'm on now. And uh, looking back on that, I'm really glad that I hit post. When did you realize it was time to seek help? When did I realize it was time to seek help? I, I think it was when I really started experiencing that anhedonia that I mentioned earlier, just the lack of feeling any happiness whatsoever in my life. I, and one way I can describe it is like, you know that this activity makes you happy because it had always made you happy. For me, it was soccer. I'd always loved kicking the ball around. Soccer was always a great part of my life. And when I was on the soccer field, I felt nothing. I could score the game winning goal. I would feel nothing. And to me, that was like a major red flag that something's going on here. It was time to seek help when I couldn't feel emotions. That's when it was time to seek help. And it was time to seek help when I had a friend who cared enough about me to tell me, hey, I think you're struggling and I think you need some help. What was it like getting treatment for depression? Here's the best way that I can describe it. Getting treatment for depression is like, you're walking around in black and white vision. You, you can only see right in front of you. You've got these kind of goggles on that just, you see things only in black and white. You don't see all the colors of the world. And you're going to therapy and you don't know if you're getting much out of it. And you know, you may be taking a medication if your doctor prescribes it and you don't know if you're getting much out of it. It's like, you know, every day may be just a little bit better, but not enough to really tell the difference. And as the days go on and the weeks go on, all of a sudden, you know, a couple months go by and you realize, oh, whoa, I can see the colors. It's like you put on a pair of glasses and now it's like, whoa, I can see around me. I can see so clearly now. And the, the colors, just everything looks so much more bright. It's not, it's not just black and white anymore. You're, you're, everything is more vibrant and that process of coming out of a depressive state is an incredible feeling. It, it truly is. Finding joy in things that you used to enjoy, that is amazing. I remember I was just jumped on a skateboard and just started skating and I was like, I feel good. And when you're stuck in a depression, it feels like you're never going to feel good again. Yeah. That's what seeking treatment for depression was like. It was the best decision I ever made. So knowing what you know now, what would you want to tell yourself back then? I would tell myself that I don't have to do this all on my own. I don't have to be the one that fixes what I'm going through. I can reach out for help to professionals whose job it is to help people who are struggling with mental health. I would tell myself to go to a therapist earlier, way earlier than I ended up going. I would tell myself that it's okay to go to a psychiatrist. I would tell myself that I don't have to be alone in this process. How has stigma affected you? Stigma prevented me from seeking help in the first place. Stigma prevented me from going to therapy when I was in college and talking to people about what I was experiencing with my mental health. I mean, I've dedicated my career now and what I do on social media to shatter stigma at every opportunity I can. That's why I'm so open about my journey on social media, about, um, about depression, about seeking help and letting people know that they're not alone in what they're going through. Stigma literally kills people. It literally kills people every single day because people don't seek help. Stigma prevents people from talking about what they're going through. And if we don't talk about it, we're struggling in silence and people are losing their lives out here. So stigma is uh, my worst enemy. I fight stigma every day. What's one mental health myth you'd like to bust? I think so many of us feel that what we're experiencing, no one else would understand. No one would know you know, that we stay up at night and can't sleep or, uh, you know, that we can't get certain thoughts out of our head. No one would understand. But in reality, so much of us experience these symptoms uh, throughout the world. What you're going through, someone is going through something so similar, maybe down the block, maybe in your own home, maybe in the state next door or in the country or across the sea. Somebody is going through it just like you are. And that's why I love social media so much is that it connects people all over the world and you get to see, wait a minute, I'm not the only one that's going through this. This person's going through this too. And when you feel less alone, you feel empowered, especially if you see someone else getting better. Like this person went 
and got help for what they were going through and they're doing better. Now I can do the same, I can get better. What are your top three strategies for staying well? Top three strategies for staying well. I'll, I'll tell you what I do. And um, I actually talked about this before in a United Brain Association video. It's the video about uh, the house of cards. You know, the, there's a, the life force that was created by a psychiatrist named Dr. Stutz. And uh, the life force is essentially a, a pyramid, right? And at the bottom of the pyramid, is your relationship to your body. This is things you can do for your body every single day to keep yourself in the best mental health shape. That's exercise. That's making sure you're getting adequate, consistent quality sleep and uh, diet, right? So making sure that you're eating good, solid foods um, with you know high nutrients and making sure you're eating fruits and vegetables and just a balanced, overall balanced diet. Then the, the middle layer is your relationship to others. Uh, you know, loneliness is actually an, an epidemic. It's, it's something the Surgeon General really has talked about a lot because loneliness has been shown to increase your risk of developing certain mental health conditions. There's a huge link between loneliness and depression, as well as other uh, medical conditions as well. Uh, and just to be able to connect with other people, it doesn't have to be this big thing. It doesn't need to be a huge party you throw with all your friends and family. It could be going out to eat with somebody in your class or in your work, or you know, spending a Friday night with someone playing you know, cards, or it doesn't have to be this big thing. It could just be connecting with another human being. It's, it's so helpful. And when we stay isolated, which became so common and prevalent in, in the lockdown, when we stay isolated for a long period of time, it can have really poor effects on our mental health. The top layer of the pyramid is your relationship with yourself. And that's what are things that you do every single day that are, that bring you joy and and give you a sense of belonging. And for me, you know, it's like I garden every single day. I, I make sure that my plants are, are fed well. I make sure that I meditate every day. I make sure that I have a time to read every single day, even if it's for a couple minutes. It's like my time for me. This is what really keeps me grounded. And maybe if it helps me, it might help you. What are you most proud of in your life so far? What I'm the most proud of is me having the courage to hit post on that photo with an antidepressant on my mouth and telling the world that I take medication for my mental health and I'm proud of it. That photo changed a lot of things in my life and I know it, it affected other people as well because when I hit post, which did, by the way, that had been in my drafts for months. I was so cautious and scared and what would I, what happens if I hit post? You know, people might view me differently. You know, what's, ultimately I came to the conclusion of this post has the potential to help so many people, especially in the medical field. There's so much stigma against reaching out for help in the medical field. And I knew that this post, and at the time, I think I was the most followed resident in the country. As a resident doctor, you know, studies show that one in four resident doctors experience depression throughout their training. For me to hit post on that, and to let others know that, hey, I'm a resident doctor and I take medication for my mental health. I go to therapy for my mental health and I'm still here. I'm still a doctor and I'm a better doctor because I went and got help instead of suffered in silence. For me to hit post on that and, and have people all over the world really resonate with that. I got thousands of messages. I woke up in the morning, that thing was viral beyond belief. I got thousands of messages from people saying, thank you for sharing that. You know, I also struggle with my mental health or my mom or my dad or my sister struggles with their mental health. It, it pushed the culture, at least in medicine and hopefully, you know, just in the mental health world in general, it pushed the culture a little bit towards a more compassionate direction. And that's the thing I'm the most proud about. What advice do you have for people that are cautious of seeking help for depression? My advice is that you don't have to go through this alone and that you can talk to somebody about what you're going through. It could be a friend, a family member, a coach, a colleague, someone you work with, someone you go to school with. Just open that door and let them know what you're going through. I guarantee you it'll be worth it. And once you tell one person, it's easier to tell the next person. And I'll end the video with something that I like to say in a lot of my videos, which is that what you are going through now and how you feel now is not the way that you're always going to feel. That's something I really needed to hear when I was going through it. Things are going to get better. Stay positive and reach out for help. You're not alone in what you're going through.